that it may be a resting place, peaceful and secure for the body of your servant, William Robert Voller. Bill Voller was a prominent mango farmer near Tanin in the northern province. Two years ago, he became yet another victim of a farm attack. He was stabbed at least 20 times, then shot dead outside his house. Hobeni village near the Voller farm in the Ofkalako area. It was here that three of Bill Voller's attackers grew up and lived. It's a desperately poor community, dependent on the jobs provided by farmers. Voller was one of the biggest employers in the area. In the early hours of 30 November 1999, five men attacked his farm. A sixth waited in the getaway car. Voller had just made his wife Vera her morning tea. When he went outside, the men stabbed and shot him. They then assaulted Mrs. Voller and tied her up. The killers fled with handguns and a few other items. The whole time they were here, they kept saying, where's the money, where's the money, to, to a degree that became tiresome, to put it mildly. Um, I'm certain that they were basically um, trying, to, trying to get money, yes. They, they'd, but they had put together um, an attack that was extraordinarily well planned. And looking, looking at the details afterwards, it was very well planned. It had been put in place. It was organized. It was, it was a hit, definitely a hit. The police, commando, and local farmers immediately launched a massive manhunt. But five of the attackers were already hundreds of kilometers away, hiding in a squatter camp on the East Rand in Gauteng. Only with the help of the local community, the police managed to arrest the suspects within 72 hours. We were the of the of the of the public the informant of us. He us to Primrose. That was a squatter camp, a plakkers camp. It is a really good inlichting what we had had die die loopt van hier af binnen een paar dagen die kan toe gaan arresteren. Death has a finality about it that it was more important for me to come to terms with the death than revenge of any kind or yeah. I left that up to the most amazing police force that um, took over the case, who were clever enough to find the perpetrators in incredibly short order, who were consistent and careful beyond imagining in putting together their evidence, who were kind beyond imagining as well, caring, who still are in very supportive. We are really very lucky to have policemen like we do have in this area. Voller and a business partner had built the only schools in Oveni. He'd been involved in several projects in the community, and his death angered both white and black. After his death, we, the stakeholders of this area of this Oveni, wrote a sympathetic letter towards his family. Because we knew that well, Billy Fuller used to help us in employment opportunities in a minor of giving us a minor education and giving us donating some uh, blocks for us he had that ability to um, to capture people's imagination he he really he really cared about people and you, and it just it just emanated from him it was it was a he was an interesting man really Police investigations revealed an intricate plot to attack the Voller farm. The man believed to be the mastermind was a resident of the Hoveni village. It left the area and joined an uncle on the East Rand. There, they hatched their plan. Backed up by other criminals, they returned to the farm, 
planning to execute the robbery on the day the Volas paid their workers. These uh, criminals that killed the, the Lifona, their background, now point number one, the one who is a mastermind, never even completed the primary school. The other one, too, never even completed the, the primary school fees. That is why he doesn't have enough education. He resorted to those activities because he's unchallenged. Had he had an opportunity of completing primary school and going to the secondary school, so he wouldn't have that mind of socializing himself into those uh, subcultures which I'm referring to the criminal activities. Shilovana tries desperately to keep the children of Oveni busy and away from criminal influences. But he's fighting a losing battle. Many of the parents are poor and can't afford even basic school fees. This means their children leave school at a young age. With hardly any jobs available in the area, they migrate to the cities. Whenever they go to Johannesburg or so ever to the urban area, they go there with the hope that well, they'll get jobs and employment opportunities. Only to find that well, when they arrive at that end, they really do not get uh, those uh, jobs as I indicated before. Then they resort much to these uh, criminal activities. They cannot do those criminal activities in, uh, in Johannesburg because they are not mastermind. They are afraid to be killed. Then they learn those tricks and come back here and exercise those tricks here. The residents of Aveni are buckling under the onslaught of thieves, robbers and murderers. Here, criminals have become role models. The crime is very high. In reality, it's very high. It can, if I can put it in, in meters, it's from here, it's from Cape to Messina. The winkels for um, train to Akka to the third and Nach and Gebrek, and I steal all this. So that's from the winkels for a winkel and ours for Gritzgar alone. In on that I have been a big fair from the Nien Dorp of it, as you brought from the Dorp. All alternative at the latest some money plus at the Hanan Brick. The criminals become role model to the young people because they're driving nice cars. Sometimes they own big houses through criminal activities. So they tend to copy those bad things. They regard us with certificates from education as stupid people. In August this year, the six men who killed Vola were sent to jail for life. But the people of Oveni say even this harsh sentence won't be a deterrent for others. Desperate youth simply have too little to lose if they commit a crime. The farming town of Swartruggens in northwest province. A fate at the church is the perfect chance to see friends and neighbors. It's a close-knit community. Everyone knows everyone. And here everyone knows at least one family torn apart by a farm attack. The Potgieters are one such family. Piet and Hetty Potgieter lost their two sons in two separate farm murders, five years apart. Their daughter Rita is their only remaining child. Their sons are buried side by side on the family farm. Their youngest son, Kubus, was killed five years ago while selling vegetables. His killers have never been caught. Earlier this year, his older brother, Piet, was shot on his farm in front of his wife. He was 42. Now three men are standing trial for his murder. For his parents, this is no consolation. All the dreams they had for their sons are lost. Hello, 
is for you so vocal. For Pete Potrickler Sr., much of the passion he had for the land and for farming is gone. He sculled down his own farming activities and he's had to sell the two farms he'd help his sons to buy. These farms were next to the family farm in the Lindley Spoort Valley near Swatrachas. Ek het vir my kinders, jy weet, uh, ek het hulle probeer help, dat hulle nie so zwaar as ek moes gekry het. Uh, dat het met hulle kon beter lewe gegaan het. Daar is het van my weggeneem, my waar oor, vir wat sê ge, hoekom, hoekom jy nou nog aangaan? Uh, sorg net vir jouself, jy kan leef van dag na dag, en dis hoe dit gaan. Jy stel nie meer belang nie. Nee, ek gaan vir julle sê, jy kan nie vir een ander mens eindelijk verdreedlik wat jou gevoelend is. Maar mense, laat ek een haat in jy, is ook so. Ek kan dit nie wegrit nie. Laat ek geen, maar geen vertrouwend uit die oog het, is ook waar. Kijk met dubbele oor. Dis jammer. Maar ek geloof nie, ek kan verkwalig word. Nou, ons sê weer, ja, is nie, dis die krimineel wat ons haal. Nie die swart nie. Piet Potgeteer Junior's murder put the community on a knife edge. White farmers were threatening to take the law into their own hands. They were demanding retribution. But Nabot Leketi managed to stop the threatened violence. In an impassioned speech at Potrita's funeral, Leketi pleaded for calm. White and black heeded the call. Leketi is a prominent farmer in the nearby Madikwe district and chairman of the National African Farmers Union. I guess a voorzitter van hierdie omgeving van Madikwe van baie boer. En daarom moet ek vrede bespreek tussen die, die twee boere, wit boere en die swaard boere. Neighboring farmer Elifas Chinangwe believes black and white farmers should unite to put pressure on government. Pressure to stop farm attacks and bring back the death penalty. He's been attacked twice on his Lindley Spoort farm. In the latest incident a few months ago, criminals overpowered Chinangwe in his farm shop. They assaulted him and held him and his two grandchildren hostage. Ek is swart boere wat ek slag gekry het. Hoekom het ek om gekry? Dit is jou, dit, dit is net waar een boer is. Ek is enigste boere nie in die habiet hierso, wat swart boere wat ek het tussen die boere, wat ek die selde ding gekry het wat die boere. Dit mens, elke boere, of as ons meer gewees wat die boere swart mens, ons al die selde slag gekry het. Uh, die Farm attacks are more and more focused on, 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 on the black environment of farmers, of the colored farmers. And um, I'm not 100% sure why. Uh, the perception that uh, farm attacks are actually focused on white farmers are a little bit uh, thrown aside and, and, and turned around. If you look at farm attacks, for example, um, many, many farmers are non-white and that figure are on the increase. Piet Potgieter Jr. was respected and liked in Tlokweng village. It was here that he sold most of his vegetables, but his assailants came from the village. When they were arrested, the vast majority of the impoverished community was relieved. Here, the young suspects had allegedly conducted a reign of terror, sparing no one. In communities like these, young people often have little regard for law and order. South Africa's history could play a role in motivating some of the people in engaging in criminal behavior and in attacking farms. Because what happened in 1994, when had a very large group of young South Africans, especially black South Africans, who had tremendous hopes and expectations, expectations about themselves, that they would get fixed employment, that they would have a better way of life. And for many of these people, this hasn't occurred. And it's possible that these expectations now have been translated into disappointment and possibly anger against society generally, but maybe more specifically against segments of society who they perceive to be fairly affluent. 
And it's possible that some of the, this anger is also directed at farmers. I don't think it's directed specifically at farmers only, but generally at people who they perceive to have wealth. In many cases, farm workers themselves are victims of farm attacks. But they're often also on the receiving end of unfair treatment from employers. Nabot Lekefi warns that this could lead to a climate that could be exploited by criminals. He has spent long hours listening to farm workers and criminals in different parts of the country. What say the Kennergis van hierdie man wat so rof gaan behandel word? As en ek goteng go tlotli yo ana le di tsala di thomitsa gagwe. Ko ka e fela ga se so etho ba to fela ana le matha. Ko a ka bona ntuso teng. Ya no, ha le go. Di tlhoboro ke ntletse Dan bo gene di ge full kom the unstiegers begin to die man who is a 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 It seems that unemployment and urbanization have had the same devastating impact on many impoverished areas. As long as the cities are seen as places to live the good life, desperate young people will flock there. And the chances are good, they'll end up in gangs. The gangs we're talking now is not the, the typical mafia type of gang or the Burukahibia type of issue. This is more loosely structured organizations. Once they've committed some crimes in the cities, they then would migrate back to the rural areas and then focus on the farm, which I know well. After the, the job, they break up and they go into different other issues and lose structures again to do uh, criminal activities. Car hijacking, cash and transfer the or a farm attack. So there does often seem to be a link between attackers and other criminal groups in cities. But it isn't often in a very organized way. I don't think there are any major crime syndicates out there which are responsible for high or significant number of farm attacks. Farm attackers are well organized. In particular, they're targeting three provinces. Gauteng, where attacks on small holdings contribute to the high figures, and Mpumalanga and Northwest. Most of the attacks take place on escape routes to and from the big cities. People on many occasions make the uh, remark that this military precision, and I think that uh, that also creates a wrong perception. Because most of the farm people, the farm attacks today, are between the ages of 70 to 21. And that's people that actually have no military training at what's so all. Uh, we should rather look into their plan very good. Nice journey. Have a nice journey. Most communities in South Africa, rural and urban, complain about crime. The cash strapped security forces are stretched to the limit in their battle against criminals. In the vast and often scarcely populated farming communities, it's even more difficult to respond to calls or prevent crime. Crime prevention operations like these are expensive, but the police insist that rural safety is one of their priorities. They recently launched Operation Akantus II. Its main aim is to provide a visible security force presence. The Rural Safety Plan which was launched a few years ago, now falls under this operation. With the assistance of uh, the commanders and local farmers themselves, I think we've been highly successful. I think uh, these are one of the biggest success stories in terms of operational activities. In some areas, the figure is as high as between 80 and 90 percent of the cases the attackers are caught, or one or more of the attackers are caught. The police plan to recruit an additional 30,000 reservists, many of whom will be deployed in rural areas. They may not have to meet the strict requirements of ordinary reservists. The aim is to involve as many people as possible in securing the safety of South Africa's Plakkeland. This will increase the intelligence gathering capabilities of the security forces. But even this may not be enough. I mean, on the one hand, one can do what's been done for now some years now is simply to give the law enforcement agencies more resources, have more patrols in farming areas, have more roadblocks, 
uh, improve the, the intelligence capabilities of the state so that f some farm attacks can be prevented. You can deploy 20,000 or 22 million police officers. That won't solve farm attacks um, because you don't address the causals, the causal factors behind crime. As important, if arguably not even more important, would be a long-term solution. And that is to look at the underlying reasons as to why South Africa is such a violent society, as to why there are so many criminals out there who use very high degrees of violence to achieve their aims and to enrich themselves. We need to address the culture of violence. South Africa's violent past still haunts its youth, even those who were born after the struggle for freedom. I'm afraid that if you're going to look into the, the world, international environment, you see, we actually need two generations to get rid of this problem. Uh, and we only can get rid of that problem by, by educating our, our children. My own uh, conviction is that we will not uh, change the crime situation in this country to the extent that we can say that we are at acceptable levels of crime. If the other conditions which, which leads to crime and causes crime are not effectively uh, dealt with. After Piet Potgieter's murder, racial violence threatened to disrupt the Swatrogen's community. But black and white came together to tackle some of the causes of crime and farm attacks head on. The local farmers have formed a single development forum. The aim is to market their produce, make money and create jobs. And in the long run, reduce the violence. We lost our roots, so to speak, a long time ago and we assume the behavior of Africans, of being a South African. Could you mediate your problem? You need the involvement of civil society, of churches, of parents and teachers, of, and of the community generally, to teach South Africans that violence isn't the way to build a, a new and better and more prosperous South Africa. So this is Kalanga.